In this video, we'll be looking at first grade telling time. In first grade, students tell time to the hour and the half hour using analog and digital clocks. So when we start out, um, we're going to just make sure that we're all on the same page with the analog clock and the digital clock. These are the two ways that the students have to be able to look at and be able to tell you what time it is. So they would need to tell you that this is 8.30 and this is 5.30. Students are only telling time in first grade to the hour and to the half hour. There's no other minutes. They don't have to know 15 minutes, 45 minutes, quarter after, half past, things like that. They just need to be able to tell us to the hour and to the half hour for telling time. In first grade, it's also not about a.m. or p.m. Um, the a.m. and p.m. is added on into second grade for their TEKS for telling time. So one thing we can use to help the students begin to understand the clock because first graders, this is their very first time working on any time teak. There is no prior knowledge coming from kindergarten with this teak. So one thing we can use is a number line. Students understand or should understand how the numbers are progressing from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. What happens with a regular clock or an analog clock is that we keep spinning on those same numbers. So to help the students understand that, we can give them a, just a number line that goes to 12 and we can help them by folding and showing how that clock is actually created. That it is a number line but it's just to 12 and it's put in a circular motion like this. And so I can see as I keep spinning past 12, I'm going to keep going and that just shows um, how they can see how that clock is actually created that it is really a number line it's just put into a circle so one thing that we can also help our students understand because they've never done clocks before is to help them understand how the movement of the clock works um, so we might use the term clockwise and we want the students to get an understanding of what that is so a pretty simple activity we could do with the kids is just give them a pretty simple oval track, some type of car that rolls, and we could have them move the object or move the car in the direction that the hands move on the clock. So even before we're giving them clocks, we can just kind of experience this that the hands move clockwise and we can see how they move. Clans, the hands go counterclockwise or backwards, um, then they could push it around, but we're really trying to get them to understand that these, this is the direction that the clock hands move. So it's just to help them with that background knowledge on those clocks. Um, we also want the students to understand how clocks can be created, how the numbers work, so we can help them create a clock by using just a paper plate and using benchmark numbers to help them create it. Um, it's not in the teaks that they have to create a clock, but to help give them a better understanding of where the numbers go. So the paper plates just folded in the fourths and then we would line up our vertical line and we would have the students mark that this is a 12, this is 3, 6, and 9. And then we can go back and we can say well we have to equally space our 1 and our 2, 4 and 5, 7 and 8, 10 and 11. So this could easily be just a circle piece of paper that the students fold into fourths and then we write the numbers and then we put it in our interactive notebook to help them just relate to understanding where those numbers go on the clock. And this will give them those benchmark numbers. With uh, first grade and teaching the clock, and again, no knowledge coming from kindergarten, we have to very explicitly teach the hour hand and the minute hand. They have to start to understand the differences between the two. Um, so this is just a little um, song. It's apparently sung to I'm a Little Teapot. I'm not singing it for you um, to help them understand. And one version that I saw, the teacher uh, sings this top part about the smaller hand. She sings it really slow because it's short and small. And then she sings the longer one really fast. Um, and that's just her way of doing it. Uh, putting body movements where the kids are actually using their arms uh, will help just as well. But we have to explicitly teach the hour hand and the minute hand. So when we start using clocks, um, some of the clocks are helpful in that if we use the Judy clocks, then we can see that a lot of times the hands are two different colors, so that's going to help them start to differentiate. Um, students can also use student-made clocks, so this is just a cardstock cutout and um, 
hands used with a brad, but they're different colors, you could actually write hour and minute on there to help them understand what those words mean uh, for first grade. This clock has two parts to it underneath are just the minutes underneath them. So we want to make sure that we're using actual clocks, Judy clocks, student made clocks, and then we want to use pictures of clocks out as well. So when we get to what's the biggest struggle with first graders in telling time and what's the biggest struggle with second graders in telling time and third graders and so on, we get to statements like this. Uh, you show a clock to students and they say the time is 2.55. And then when you tell them, no, that's not correct, they say, well, what do you mean? The shorthand is clearly pointing to the two. Um, so students have a hard time understanding that the space between the two numbers still belongs to the one, even though it's really, really close to the two. So we could start out our instruction with a scaffold, and that would be to just use just the hour hand on the clock. Not giving them any minute hand, we just want to identify what is that hour hand, where does it go? Um, and we can give them clocks that have the hour hand pointed to a number or in a space sort of like this one. And they can just describe. It's a little bit after the two. It's before the three. Um, and those are terms that we use a lot when we, as adults, start talking about, you know, kids will ask us, what time is it? Oh, it's a little after two. Um, oh, it's almost three o'clock. So we can get them to focus on this hour hand first before we start worrying about that minute hand. So one scaffold to help with students identifying where the hour hand is pointing, what hour is it to, is to start with just the hour hand. We can also give them a clock that's colored. This way they start to understand that wherever it falls within this green spot or the yellow spot or in this blue spot, that all belongs to that number, to the three. This belongs to the four. This belongs to the five. Um, another one that I've done, I've actually colored this number in whatever color that space is. So the one would be colored green. The two would be colored this yellow. The three would be colored this blue color. And by doing that, the students start to understand that that space is what's signifying the hour. Um, the minute hand, they tend to not have a whole lot of trouble with uh, first grade because they're just going to have a minute hand pointing to the 12, which would give us the o'clock, or to the 6, which would give us the 30 minutes. So just to kind of sum up what you can do in your classroom is to kind of give them some scaffolds that look like this. So within this beginner scaffold, it's colored, and they even have the number written in the space. So the 1 is written in the space. This one takes away the numbers within that, and then this last one takes away the color. So if you have any questions on telling time in first grade, just let us know.